so I haven't given us a proper introduction. We're Odessa Rose. Try that again. Odessa Rose, thank you. Good evening. How you doing? You okay? Oh yeah. Okay. I'm gonna hear a little click. That's just gonna be the needle coming out. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's all right. Keep your arm down.
Dangerous. Someone's gonna get hurt. No. No. Oh, okay. Nobody's gonna get hurt. Stop yeah, being is... a baby. Yeah. Go back inside. I'm not gonna get hurt. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, dude. Celebrate your independence yeah. in style. Enjoy your life. Hello everybody, uh, here are some letters that I got from Mrs. Brady's kindergarten class when I was in the hospital, and uh, some of them are particularly sweet and funny, so I thought I'd share them with everybody. This one says, I, I hope you get better soon, and it has some hearts on it, and then inside it says, Dear, comma, Joe, comma, can you do me a favor and get well soon? My heart is broken that you are in the hospital. Love, Julie D. Kindergarten, SBS, Julie Dolan. And then there's, uh, it's either multicolored hay or a rainbow. And then a pot of gold. A pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Here's another one. Actually, it has a rainbow and two people under it. It says, Love, Kaya. And on the inside, I, I just, I picked out this one because it's just got a lot of glitter. Like the glitter that's also glue. I think that this would have been similar to one I would have made in kindergarten. Here is another one. A lot of people did their hands, you know, just trace their hands, which is good. You know, it's always right there in front of you. It says, hope you get better soon. Love, Julia, another Julia. And, and inside is another rainbow uh, that with a pot of gold, a lot of pots of gold. And then there's me towering over a little child here and giving them either what's either a balloon or a massive lollipop. And I look like a pedophile. Um, also, the son is wearing sunglasses, which is a bit ironic. Uh, this one is just confusing, but I like, it was, definitely took a lot of time. And it says, uh, to Joe from Anna. And then it says, uh, which is like a, it's like a, password or something. It says GR2B2GR. Uh, I don't know, maybe that's her ATM pin number or something. This uh, has gone, has deflated a bit, but it was a, uh, a balloon shaped like a cross. It was, pretty, it was pretty unbelievable, actually. And inside it says, 
have a bootiful, B-O-O-O-O-T, bootiful day. Uh, get well soon. And it's a ghost. Can't really see. Sorry. Uh, I like that one, although it's a little morbid. This one uh, was a little off-putting. Hi, I am Susan from Ms. Brady's Kindergard class, spelled K-A-L-A-S. Uh, hope you get better. Joe. I'm, I assume she meant better, but she spelled it B-A-D-R. And like most people, she turned the J around the wrong way. Only people with the name Julia or James or, you know, J's in their name seem to put it the right way. But there, there's a lovely heart down the bottom. And there's some other lovely illustrations inside and a very large, demented-looking flower. But I, uh, I like this one a lot. Then this is the creme de la creme here, uh, which it's, uh, I don't, I'll just read it. Okay, it says, get well, Joe, plain, not, no cover, just get well, Joe, J the correct way, that's important. Then there's a joke in it. Uh, are you ready? Here it is. Knock, knock, who's fire? I'm fire. Why? Because of a dog. There's a spaceship. Blasting off of Earth. So. That's it. Uh, I just want to thank Mrs. Brady's class and uh, everybody for the support and sending your cards. They're very lovely. Bye.
Hey, Jill. What's up, dude? You want to do something today? Uh, yeah, I want to get my work done. What work do you have to do? I don't know. I got to program and uh, run a TV station, okay? It's not playtime, all right? You don't want to play tag or run in the meadows outside? No, I don't want to run in the friggin' meadows, dude. It's 110 degrees out. I'm a 27-year-old. I'm not going to run around and play tag with a little kid, okay? Sorry. Do, do you want to play hide-and-go-seek? Yeah. Yeah, let's play hide-and-go-seek. You go hide... And uh, I'll come looking for you right away, okay? I'll count to ten thousand. See ya. Got me. Gotcha. Oh, oh, yes, good job. All right. That was great. It's my turn now. One more. One more, okay? All right. One, two. Your turn! Oh, what the fuck, dude? Got me. Found ya. Gotcha. Man, you're good. You'll never know I'm here. Has anybody seen Rob? Hi, I'm Joe L. I am uh, 27 years old. And uh, this is my profile. No, th this is my profile. But this is my dating profile. I'm funny like that. Hello, ladies. My name is John P. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you, I already have a girlfriend. We're going out about a year. And we definitely love each other, but uh, the reason I was doing this is because in the bedroom, uh, it's not as good as I want it to be. So, I, I would call myself a filmmaker, but I, I, that's not really my profession. I work at a community access TV station, so it's like uh, working at a hot dog stand and saying I'm a gourmet chef. You know, she won't let me do everything I want to do, if you know what I mean. Um, you know, like, you know, a little bit of, uh, where's the governor she's not into, or, you know, take it back and take it out and slap it around in the, the uh, Minnesota face plant, and, I mean, she's not into any of that. Uh, oh, I, uh, I'm really good at the video game Ms. Pac-Man, and, uh, that's actually probably the longest relationship I've had, is with Ms. Pac-Man. Um, yeah, so, you know, promiscuous ladies, you know, between the ages of 18 and whatever, as long as you're attractive, I guess, I'm not gonna lie. Don't want a piggy showing up because you know that's just not gonna help the situation at all.
I grew up uh, in a small New England town uh, that is quite wealthy, right outside of Boston. And uh, so please, if you are of any non-Eurocentric ethnicity, just, you know, don't even bother because I can't get past it. It's too weird. But um, unless I do have a, a small Asian bug in me, so... Uh, yeah, a couple of role plays I would be into. Uh, you dress up as Gandalf from Lord of the Rings, and I dress up as the Balrog, and you're like, I shall not pass, and then I'm like, I could have a whip or something or whatever, I don't know if you've seen that movie, he's got a whip, and then, you know, I like whip, whip you, and then you're like, oh, I can't resist, and you know, and then I do my thing, or... Hi, uh, I'm Anthony G. I'm 25 years old, and uh, I'm looking for a girl who is cool, um, likes to do things. And uh, I'd like it you to be uh, between the ages of like 18 and 21 would be good. Um, and you gotta not mind that. Uh, I probably care more about myself than I will ever care about you because I'm me. You know, because I'm pretty poor anyway. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to buy you anything. I'm not going to take you out. You know, uh, I'm not going to let you smoke my weed or drink my beer. You know, even my cigarettes. You know, I mean, I'm not going to lie. This is going to be strict, strictly a sexual relationship for moi. Not even that good in bed, so don't even expect much. You know, if you can orgasm really easily, that'd be a plus, because that'd raise my ego, you know. And, uh, but if you can, you can fake it good. That's good, too. You know, I won't know the difference, so it has. Ugh. Most people don't realize this, but New Hampshire does have a coastline. It's about a mile long, so come visit Newcastle Island. We have boats like this one that goes pretty fast with a guy who's, and hey, look, there's seaweed. Everybody likes seaweed, although we don't really have many beaches. It's fun to swim in seaweed, and then there's a boat that shouldn't make you feel lonely at all, even though it's such a lonely image. And we also have giant boats like this to pollute our water. It's great, even though they're not supposed to be polluting the water at all. It's going to be fun. You should come down. You can get fried shrimp, fried clams, fried scallops, fried clams. And there's this guy who's painting, but he's not really there. Oh, so come on up today. It's only one mile north of Medford, Massachusetts. You can go and stay with your friend Alex. It'll be a blast. Yay! Um, what is back here? I am about to tell you the entire trilogy of the Lord of the Rings. Well, I am about to explain to you the entire trilogy of the Lord of the Rings. Middle Earth, uh, the area, the setting where our stories take place, are broken up into four basic ages. Frodo was born. He was given to his uncle, Bilbo Baggins, because his father and mother died. They drowned. And um, Frodo's best friend was Samwise Gamgee. Although they were attacked by the Nazgul, also known as the Nine Riders, along the way, at Weathertop, which is one of the uh, arid hills, they were separated at the end of the first Lord of the Rings book, The Fellowship of the Ring. And then Samwise and Frodo went together, although Gandalf died at uh, the uh, Mystic Mountains. He was killed by the last Balrog of Morgoth, the first Dark Lord of Middle-earth. That was only used during the early Third Age, but was used in a, the Rohan Riders 
and um, the uh, the ends. Well, not not the ends. Though. He was uh, of race of men and heir of Isildur, and he lived most of his life in Rivendell, the return of the king. Although uh, J.R.R. Tolkien opposed to this, John Ronald Rule Tolkien opposed to this naming, because he thought it gave too much of the basic storyline away. He's tough for them. They broke into Mordor and climbed the tallest cracks of Mount Doom. Collaborated and uh, along with the elves and dwarves and hobbits formed a peaceful border during the Fourth Age. Destroyed themselves through the passage of the Grey Havens which was used by the elves along with Galadriel, and, well, it's controversial if they destroy themselves. Okay. Can I be done? Making pasta. Sounds good. Let's see. Oh. No, you don't. What are you trying to do? You don't do it like that? That's what my mom always did. You put it like that on the wall. No, you gotta like clean it. That's when you know it's ready. Like what? Show me. Yeah. Bam. Oh, oh, there you go. Going right back <laughs> in. <Yeah. laughs> Alright, let me try. Ah, it's burning! Get the Get fuck out! <laughs> ah, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Anthony, the toilet's clogged again. Okay, I'll go call the accountant. That's a good question. One of the best days of my life was just one time where we had a soccer tournament and we were playing this team called the the Hamshakers in Greensboro, and they were our arch nemesis. This is probably when I was in like eighth grade. And I wish they would do this now in soccer. This is kind of topical because the World Cup just happened, but after the game was tied, what they do is they don't do penalty kicks, they do overtime, but after every five minutes of overtime, they take a player off of the field. And so it got down like, and the first thing they do is they take, they take the goalie off the field. And then, so it's like no goalie, 11 on, or 10 on 10, then eventually got down to like seven on seven. And it was like, we played for like an hour after a regular time, which the math doesn't make sense because I just said every five minutes, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, and then our team won. It was pretty exciting.
and then the next day we won the final and I had the assist and we won in the rain I felt like I was in a movie probably should have been being filmed 12 year old boys playing soccer that would have been weird though someone was filming that if it was a parent I guess that wouldn't have been weird but if it was like a person not a parent that would have been weird that was a great weekend though probably my best weekend in my sports career at the young age of 12 then it was all downhill uphill for a little bit freshman year of high school was pretty good I made the varsity as a soccer player as a freshman I had my number one, I was number one in the class in GPA so once you're number one in the class in GPA as a freshman you can only go down because really I mean why would you want to try harder and then I went down all the way pretty far and then second semester of senior year, my GPA was like a 2.0 because I'd already gotten into college and I'd just given up. I was just taking pills and drinking a lot. It was fun though. It was fun. Then we're gonna catch these damn giraffes. <laughs> Hello, how are you today? Hey, I just illegally downloaded Beverly Hills Chihuahua. Wanna watch it? I don't know, it says here that we should avoid invisible thievery such as intellectual property that does not belong to us. Exodus 2279. But it's Beverly Hills Chihuahua and cool. Well, I guess it's okay then. Sinner! Down, you saw a 
going on guys how we doing we are just What's working 411 yeah working man. yeah i know how that is yeah, what are you good. working on man just yeah looking at some stuff oh, oh God, what was that? booyah ah what's up man you got give me props that. Give, no, some some props. give me that i'm what? doing that kill man i'm what, doing you it can't to take you. it like this yeah like all that right, get down. oh all right you want to do it to me you want to see how i react ah what what is going on over there? It's a wasp. You want one? Just, just get, just try it. Okay. All right. Oh my God. What's wrong with you guys? This is inhumane. You either do it or you don't do it. There is no try in this. Just do it, Robert. All right. Things a bit, but come do, on, do it. it. Everybody's doing come it. Come on, it's initiation. Do it. Come on, do it. What's the come matter on, with you? Do just it. do it now. What are you being such a like, sissy for? Just, over just here. do it. All right. Come on. Come on. What's wrong with you? Just do, do it. it. Do it. Fine. Just, just do it to me, okay? Get it over with. Do it fast. Oh shit! Sixty-five. Yeah. All right. You know, that seems like a deal. I mean, because I've been, you know, I've been telling myself I got to start biking to work. You really? Know? The environment and my just my general health. And Where do you work? Well, I work down on Cross Street. Is it is it a long ride for you from your house? No, I'm actually I'm only like a mile and a half away. I live up on uh, Washington Street. Oh, so really? I, 
That's why I feel so stupid On the, the north side of the Washington Street or south side? Uh, the south side, actually. Really? The, near the playground or the, the cat store? Uh, right beside the cat store, actually. Really? Yeah. It smells like cats? Yeah, it does. It's pretty terrible in the summer, especially. Do you live in, is it 36 Washington, 34 Washington? I'm in 34, actually. Yeah. You, know, I mean, you know the area really, really well. Yeah, you know, I've, I've been Do you have a cat? There. Yeah, yeah, a couple. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Well, um, you know, I'm going to throw in this lock as well. Oh, all I, right. I don't really need it anymore. I don't have a bike. So. Oh, okay. Well, you got... Here's the key. All right. It's Enjoy. like a car now. Yeah, let me well, help you get it to your car and um, okay, you, yeah. you give me the money there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, that would be best. I can great. give you. Just come on out over here. I wish I were dead. Huh? magic beads, right? My, uh, my friend uh, Andy so sold them to me. And uh, they grow into real animals. No, dude, those are like, you put them in, I've had those. You put them in warm water and they turn into like little one-inch sponge animals. No, they, they turn into like real animals. No, they're not, dude. It's gonna, you're just got duped, man. Dude, Nothing. do you know how much riddle and I had to sell for these? <laughs> no, but I, uh, I hope it wasn't I too much. I had to shoot a person to get Jeez. the money for these. Really? Yeah. Well, you're gonna be disappointed. I'm, I'm not going to be disappointed. Well, go, go, go do it. There's right. warm water in the back. Go try it. I bet it's just not going right. to be a big deal at all. God, dude.
everybody. Happy to be here today on such a wonderful day in, in Schenectady, New York to uh, help celebrate the marriage of Mike Brady and Laura Burke. Two people I've had the pleasure of knowing for a long time since college. And uh, I guess I should just start by how I met Mike to begin with. Uh, he was friends with somebody on my floor, my dorm, Fitzpatrick, and uh, that person arranged for all of us to get together for lunch in the Eagle's Nest, not Hitler's hideout, but um, it's a deli at BC. Neas for Simile Che, Dami V, Scrub TV. Neas for Simile Che. Whoa. Oh my god, dude. And Mike was there and he was wearing uh, jeans that and shoes that looked like they were from Kmart or whatever. And uh, which is not really kind of the style at BC. And uh, he was wearing a blue t-shirt with a washing machine on it. And uh, which is a, a, a album cover for the band Sonic Youth. Uh, also not a big BC band. So immediately I was like, all right, this kid is a mess. He is totally out of his element, and I'm going to have to show him the way. Oh a little suck my dick. It's his 21st birthday right now, but <laughs> everyone else is drinking for him right now. Right. It's a sad, sad story, a commentary on American lifestyle, if you will. <laughs> the fact that someone can live 21 years and not have a single alcoholic drink <laughs> says a lot about his personality, his strength of character, and his courage. And uh, he seemed really cool and nice and smart and funny. So I, I was like, I'm going to take this kid under my wing because he, he needs to know how to be in this environment. And uh, there were no more. <laughs> it's just so funny. <laughs> knobs to be hard. I don't think that's funny. That's, I think that's funny. Well, I mean, I think that, there were I no more that's... knobs to be. I, I think All right, funny, I got it. I, got it. I mean, that's not what I'm, I'm laughing at. The other thing. There were no more knobs to be hobbed after his arrest for impersonating a mime. There were no more knobs to be hobbed after his arrest for terrorizing gypsies. There were no more knobs to be hobbed after his arrest for giving the Pope AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if we fucking did that. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> that would be ridiculous. We would go to this thing, I believe it was on Tuesday nights, called Talking and Treats, which was organized by the Fitzpatrick uh, RAs. And um, it was just a place where everybody would meet up and talk and eat cookies and such. Mike started coming to that, and that's actually where we met Laura, who was an RA on my floor. And a lot of strange relationships came out of Talking and Treats. There was Craig Von Ahn also. Uh, he had uh, he ended up dating an RA. And uh, we can say this all now. It was, it was illicit at the time, but now it's, you know, it's in the past. <laughs> Mike became fast friends with Laura as well, and we we it was it was really great, and it was also I mean it was I mean it was actually really lame talking treats. We I think that Mike and I are the only people who would go to it, and uh, so that's that's how we met Laura. And I wasn't so sure about Laura at first. I didn't know what was going on, but uh, soon I understood why Mike liked her so much and it, it, it started to make sense to me. Hark, 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 hark. He would, you know, he, I would get drunk or something and he would, he would take me aside and be like, you're making a fool out of yourself. And I would be like, no shit, everybody here is making a fool out of themselves. That's the point, you know? So he was, he's a little bit older than his, than his age, I believe. And, uh, but that responsibility is like at the core of Mike. He's the most responsible person I know. And I have so much respect for him because of that. And that's why he's actually such a good match with Laura. They're both very like, I don't know. They don't have any loose ends really, you know? 
I know I haven't said very much about Laura, but I remember one time, Mike, when I was going after this girl that I spent most of my college trying to, to date, um, you know, I said, well, do you think maybe that, you know, the reason we're not together or something is because, you know, we don't like, our looks don't <laughs> match up, like she's better looking than me or something, and, and uh, he said something that I will never forget, he said, you know, Joe, water finds its level. So I think that I can apply that same thing to all the great things I've said about Mike to Laura, you know, water has certainly found its level. Remember when you live on an eating talk for a whole year? <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Happy birthday, Mike. I'm gonna lose next year anyway because Joe makes me. Brady, I remember the one time when you made me hit. That was hot. Brady, I wish you uh, good luck in your new life with your with your wife. Uh, you guys got a great future together. Good luck. And uh, I wish them all both the best of luck. Don't get divorced. Uh, that was a joke. So I raise our glasses here, everybody. And uh, let's toast to a long and fruitful marriage. There's an ark and it's a stomach and you're gonna eat every second animal on the boat. Every animal in your Don't stomach. Smile. You <laughs> madness. Yeah, get angry. Playing Just speak angel German, killing, maybe. eating of babies and sin. Hateful hate of <laughs> sin and hate. Eat it. Eat that mother shoot. <laughs> Keep going. As you get older, as you get older, you see things in, in society, you see things in politics, you see things in government, you see things just in life in general, and it makes you um, really ponder how our society is going to survive. That being said, um, I hope I'm not touching a subject that's too personal, but no. these transplants, you know what each organ is worth? Lots. Okay. So if each organ's worth, say, 20 grand. Okay. The human body, if it can be harvested, and there are people who harvest organs yes. in third world countries. I've heard of it. Okay. Uh, I've seen a movie, and it, it's just really harrowing. If, if a human body can be harvested for 300 grand, yeah. eyes, lungs, heart, liver, kidneys, yeah. do you really think that with all these killings of both Americans and people from the Middle East, that they're letting all these valuable organs just... Do you think that there are not medical teams that are very quiet? Blackwater. Blackwater could be out there carving up these corpses, putting sand in the boxes, or, or cremating them, and, and families get their loved ones back and don't realize that a quarter of the loved one's gone. So? Isn't that good? Well, well it's, it's bad. It's, I mean, it's bad because, like, an evil corporation is doing it, but it's good in the sense that it's... It's not good because... You think that... Yeah, okay. I think they're actually killing people for body parts. P Pat Tillman's my example. He wasn't supposed to die. And you're thinking, why but is this healthy? friendly fire has always happened, even since the, you know, you misfire your musket. And the... uh, there are too many coincidences, and you add them up, and you become a conspiracy theorist. But mm -hmm. there's no conspiracy when so many people are dying, and I'm just putting a valid question out there. Are people harvesting organs from these wars? Is that why the war won't end? Is there a big business that's bigger than heroin? Okay, well, why wouldn't they be... Because it's a government thing that's kind of slowing down stem cell. Why wouldn't they just allow stem cell research to be... There is stem cell research, and I got news for you. There's, there is research on... Um, you know how they don't want... Um, what are they doing? Cloning. Yeah, this, whole, this human cloning research right now, don't anyone think otherwise? Right, right. But Somewhere why? in the world, maybe in Africa, maybe in America. There's some scientist in America working on a human clone But don't right I think now. that that's a beneficial thing. Wouldn't it be great if they could take a drop of my blood and grow me a new heart in a jar? But Or whoever, or you wouldn't have to be on the death list because they could just grow you a new brain or whatever you need. I've worked with rock musicians who aren't careful with their own copyrights. People just aren't careful with yep. science. And you get some lunatic that just thinks he wants to be famous, he wants to be the next Edison, and it doesn't matter that there's a soul in a Petri dish that might be hurting as much as a lobster in hot water. But...
that you, God? No, Joe, you don't believe in God. That's right. Who is it then? I have the answers. You're going to answer my questions? Yes, Joe. There's no pasta sandwich because it would be too much carbs. Okay, will you answer my bigger questions? Like, what's going to happen to me? <laughs> <laughs>